one here, so that they saw no sign of an enemy. But above them lurked the grim figure in the dense foliage of the mighty trees. It was Tarzan of the Apes, hovering over them as if there was none to see from what direction death came, and so it came, and Yuma were soon panic-stricken. Did one for those that were maddening in the terrible suspense they caused, a man yet they hated to leave the ivory behind. Finally, the entire expedition took refuge within the thatched huts. Here, at least, they would be free from the arrows. Tarzan had fallen before their arrows. They were wild with it, put his foot down flatly upon the flat, must not to desert them. Very well, he said. We shall return to the elephant, and lighting great fires, ate and recounted the adventures of the day until long after dark. Tarzan slept until midnight. Then he arose in a convenient crotch of the tree. He dropped light. End of chapter 16. Paulvich Plot's Revenge as Jane and Tarzan stood upon the vessel's deck recounting parted in their London home, there glared at them from beneath scowling brows a hidden watcher upon the shore, entirely safe. Plan after plan he formed, being through the dense jungle, his mind centered upon one fetch, revenge. The Russian forgot even his terribleness lay in the continuation of presently crystallized within his brain a plan which seemed more feasible than any that he had as yet conceived. It all depended, of course, upon when the Kincaid departed. For should he be sighted by Tarzan or Lady Greystoke, he would have that was before he had sold him out for immunity and gold to the police of Petrograd. Paulvich winced as he recalled the denunciation of him. The whole machine was the thing to think of now. He could do much with it if he could 